Hello everyone, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. So interior design mistakes, we all make them, but how do we fix them? So in today's video, we're talking about the interior design mistakes that easily occur, they're very overlooked, but they make a huge impact on how you live your life in your space. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you all of the tips and tricks you need to fix them, but before we do so, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And I do wanna thank TP Link for sponsoring today's video, but I'll tell you more about them later on. Now the first interior design mistake that I see people make over and over again that can threaten the practicality and safety of their home is failing to take in consideration the walkways and the scale of your furniture. So we talk about scale all the time, but let me remind you what that means. It means that your furniture is appropriately sized for your space. So you know, you see those people sometimes where they have a sofa that fits like 15 people in a room that's meant for like four people and you're like, how do I walk in there? How do you do anything in there? It's so difficult to maneuver. When you're selecting furniture, it's not just about scale and how it looks, but you need to make sure that there's adequate space for people to walk. My general rule of thumb is to allow three feet of walking space in all settings. So what you wanna do is actually restructure the space to make sure that the furniture is scaled appropriately and that you do factor walkways into a design. You want to have normally at least two entrances into a space or at least two paths to maneuver so that different people could be standing at different times. You just want it to be easy. And if you start to struggle with mobility or there's someone with a wheelchair, you want them to be able to actually really exist in your space comfortably. And making this mistake kind of prohibits that from happening. So just factor that into your design. And the way to do that every time, again, is to create your own layout, get your pen and paper, and make sure that that's taken care of. And I I promise you, you're never gonna make this mistake again. The second design mistake that I see most often, and it's one that really drives me nuts, is when people fail to consider um, electric sockets and how they're actually going to hook up their electronics. So this is the 21st century. We love electronics. We have our cell phones, our tablets, our computers, our Nintendo Switches. I don't know, I'm a little old. I don't really know all the electronics these days. But we have all these electronics and they're super important to our everyday lives. But when we're designing, sometimes we forget to you know think about where the sockets are think about where we want to put our lamps and our sconces and all of that when you're laying out a room maybe it might make this most sense for the um you know the bed to be on this wall but if you can't plug everything in and you have to like pretty much take an extension cord and string it from your house to 10 houses over that doesn't make any sense so to prevent you from making this problem there are a lot of things you can do if you're building your home fresh or you have an electrician add as many electric sockets as you could possibly add that means that when the time comes, you don't have to worry about it. You can do pretty much any design that you want. And if the electric plugs are kind of distracting, you can put over different covers or something like that to kind of make them blend in. The other mistake that people made that's kind of lumped into one is that they don't strategically place their electronics. So not only do they not have a, enough electric electric sockets and places like that, but they don't strategically place their electronics and electronics can ruin the whole game. Of course, you wanna use your cell phone, you wanna watch TV, but looking at those cords and all that mess can really ruin your design. So I always encourage you to strategically place things. What I've actually done is I was so tired of looking at my internet router, but it wasn't feasible for me to have it tucked away because I didn't have great internet. And what I did is I actually got the Archer AX73 router by TP-Link and was able to totally transform the game. And again, I want to thank TP-Link for sponsoring today's video. So because of this router, um, it has the 6X Wi-Fi. It is the newest form of Wi-Fi, so it is phenomenal. You can do 8K streaming and buffering. What I really love about this router is that it gets really great coverage. So like I was saying, I used to actually have an office in my guest room here, but I could never actually connect to the internet. Every time I was in a Zoom call, the call was dropping. I'm being honest, when Babe and I used to be on the internet at the same time, I used to be like, can you please get off the internet? I'm just trying to upload this YouTube video. It would take hours and it was so frustrating. I would be sitting right across from router and I'd be like, please work. I don't have that problem anymore with the Archer AX7 III. It is so quick. I'm able to do things instantly and I get internet internet access from every corner of my home. I even get internet access down in the garage and that's incredible. I also really love that the Archer AX7 III is so easy to put together. 
the setup took minutes um, and, it, and it really took minutes. I'm, I'm not the most technologically savvy, but it took minutes. So I was able to switch out to this Archer AX7 III very swiftly and kind of get my internet working phenomenally because the information within the box, the instructions are so straightforward. And I was able to, again, just tuck it away really strategically in my closet. And because it gets such great coverage, it's able to be there and I don't have to ruin my design just for the sake of my electronics. And I don't even have to worry about safety because the Archer AX7 AX7 III comes with Home Shield. They have both a basic and pro plan. With the basic plan, you can get we weekly or um, a monthly reports on the safety of everything. You have parental controls and the pro plan, which is really, really affordable. You get that and so much more, and you're able to just make sure that you have great internet access, but you're safe in doing so. I can upload my YouTube videos in a second, which means I can pump out more content for you guys. But this TP link is so strong. It is so durable it has a great bandwidth and it, it's so good that I was able actually to put it in a closet and that means that it's tucked away in a closet now so you never have to look at it you never have to worry about the cords but I always get phenomenal internet access and that's amazing it's the best of both worlds the electronics don't have to ruin my design but I still have a design that is functional for my everyday life if you want to pick up your own Archer AX7 3 router by TP-Link I encourage you to click the link down in the description and get yours from Amazon and the best thing about about the AX7 III is that you can actually order it on Amazon and have it shipped to a local Amazon locker and you can pick it up there. And if you're not familiar with Amazon lockers, basically they have lockers from Amazon at all of your favorite locations, which means you can have um, your items shipped there, your Archer AX7 III, anything you get from Amazon. So if you don't have the luxury of getting things shipped to your home and you just wanna make sure that your things are getting shipped and dropped off at a secure location, I definitely encourage you to use the Amazon locker. It's so convenient. I go to the grocery store, I get my food and I also get my packages so now we have to talk about paint and you're like oh paint is so boring sure it might be boring well I don't think it's boring but it might be boring but it's so important so something that people get wrong all of the time is paint sheen you know when you go into Home Depot or Lowe's you're picking up your paint and they're like what sheen and you're like whichever one is gonna get me out of the store faster don't say that anymore so the paint sheen really impacts not only durability but how you perceive a space so let's talk about a media room we love to watch TV and media room play video games play games you want it to be dark and moody and you want to be able to run your screens well if you're getting a paint sheen that is super shiny so like a semi gloss or a high gloss it's going to interrupt your movie watching and so maybe you like how durable that paint is but you have all of these reflections bouncing off your wall and it's really ruining your movie going experience and you've waited six months for this new marvel movie to come out and you want to see it now paint sheen is also important when it comes to durability of course so if you have a wall that's painted like a mat or a flat, it might look the way that you want it to look, but if you look at it too hard, if you breathe on it too hard, you're gonna scuff it up and that's going to impact how you experience your home because you're gonna have scuff marks everywhere and it's just not going to be feasible to actually live in the space. So just do your homework when it comes to paint jeans. My general rule of thumb is that when you have the ceilings, you wanna do a flat or a mat. When you have trim, you wanna do a semi-gloss or something that's a little bit more resistant so if you're kicking it or anything like that, it's a different experience. When you have your walls and your trim, you want to do different paint sheens. When you're dealing with your darker rooms, your media rooms, your rooms where you have like a lot of light or you're going to be um, dealing with a lot of electronic shining lights, you want to do things that are maybe an eggshell or a flat or a mat or something to that effect so you don't have too many reflections bouncing off. There are so many rules of thumb and there's so many resources on Pinterest at the paint store. I, I'll write a pamphlet on it. I promise you I'll write a PDF and I'll put it up on my website. There are so many ways to get the paint right the first time around so that you have a paint sheen that works with, for you when it comes to living, but also in terms of looking super good. Another design mistake that is often overlooked is failing to properly divide a space. So what does that mean? Open concepts are popular, but it's not even about having an open concept. Sometimes you just have multi-purpose rooms and it generally happens when you have a living dining room combo. So we love the combos, but sometimes it looks just like an auditorium right and we're not in high school anymore this is not a pep rally we want our home to have cohesion but we want it to look like two separate rooms we paid the price for two separate rooms we want it to look like two separate rooms but how do we go about doing that you might say oh well, i have a dining table there and a sofa there that may be true, but we have to strategically place our furniture in a way that defines the space. So you can do it, you can do it in several different ways. So let's go through them. 
Number one is to strategically place the furniture. For example, if you have a living and dining room combo and you really wanna separate the places, you can have maybe your sofa floating in space and I'll put up a diagram. You can have your sofa floating in space with maybe a console table behind it. So you're like, okay, this space marks the you know living room up and then the console table is right in front of the dining table. So that marks from you know the dining table forward you can do it with actual like room dividers you can also do it with greenery so you can actually just mess up the sight line so i never talk about that but if you divide the sight line it helps to actually divide the room so people use plants people use lamps it really just divides the space up and helps you feel like it's two separate rooms Another way that you can do it is via rugs. And this is one of my favorite ways to do it because I don't like to mess up my color scheme. I like it to look like one continuous room, but a way I define them really well is I use rugs. So I have a rug in my dining room and it fits, it is scaled to my dining table. So it's large enough for my entire dining table and chairs to sit on top of it, but not too big so that it looks like it could accommodate more furniture. Then I have a even bigger rug over in my living space and all of my living room furniture is able to partially sit on it comfortably and it really divides that space the rugs are not touching one another there is ample space in between the two rugs to show the division of the two rooms the last way to divide the space so that it looks like two separate rooms is to switch up the color palette a little bit so you can have one color palette throughout your home that's what i encourage you to do but you can have varying amounts of those colors in the different spaces so for example my dining area is predominantly black. I have a black sideboard, I have black artwork, and I have a black dining table. I'm all blacked out over here. But in my living room, it's actually a lot more white and gold. I have white artwork, I have white sofas, I have gold task lights, I have my gold mirror, and I have little tiny introductions of black via my throw pillows. And I do now have a black rug, but I didn't always, but black was still part of the color scheme. You just incorporate the same colors in varying amounts to help them feel like two separate rooms. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Those were four interior design mistakes that are easily and commonly made that are ruining your home, but don't worry, they are really, really easy fixes and ones that are gonna get your home looking elevated. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Those were four interior design mistakes that are easily and commonly made, but you have all the tools to fix them. Have you made any of these mistakes before? Let's chat about it down below because I've made them all. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And be sure to use the link down below to pick up your own TP-Link Archer AX73 router. It's going to be the best thing that ever happened to your internet. But until next time, have a beautiful day.